I'm always trying to figure out what time is best to hold these meetings. I've been moving it around a little bit. Um, oh, Bavaria, see, and that's why I have, so I can catch people that are over in Europe. I do this at about one o'clock. I know at night um, I've been doing meetings to catch people in Australia. Um, so it's, it's interesting when you have an organization that's uh, literally around the world. Michigan, Massachusetts, Edmonton. Oh, hi, Penny. I think you've come to all of my Zoom meetings. Uh, Georgia, so I'll just let that roll for a minute while uh, people are still joining, and then we'll get rolling. Um, so again, if you're just joining me, uh, this is I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is going to be an intro to the Surefoot Equine Stability Program. Um, last week I did an intro, and I forgot to hit the record button, so I'm repeating the intro this week so that we can get it recorded. And then I plan to have other um, meetings about Surefoot where we can talk about specifics or interesting cases or how to use a particular pad. But this is going to be a very general overview today, uh, just kind of getting up to speed on what Surefoot is, um, why to use it, how to use it, when to use it, all those basic questions. So, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to uh, do a little screen share here. Not my picture box. There we go. And so I just have to make sure I can see the chat. Don't do it that way. If anybody has any questions. So um, the Surefoot Equine Stability Program got started in 2012. Um, not this horse, but this is typically what happens. Um, when I was uh, teaching riding to a woman who had a horse named Dante, and I would see them every month for a Monday and a Tuesday. So back to back on two days, Monday, Tuesday, once a month. And in the previous month, um, the owner had, are we recording this time? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for checking. Um, so in the previous month, she changed the saddle because she wanted to do some jumping and she borrowed a friend's jumping saddle and she used that on her horse. And then the farrier quick the horse um, I think probably because what was already starting from the saddle. And so when I saw him uh, that Monday, he was lame in the right hind leg and she was still in the jumping saddle. And I asked her if she had her dressage saddle, which she did in the trailer. So we switched and we put the dressage saddle back on, but the horse was still lame in the right hind leg. So basically um, I went home that night and I was on the phone with Dr. Joyce Harmon. I just did a webinar with her this week on Wednesday, so you can check that out on my YouTube channel. And Joyce was wanting to stand at her computer instead of sit, so she was looking for a pad to stand on. And at the same time, she was telling me about how they were using pads with dogs for rehabilitation. So I got on my laptop and I'm typing that in and I'm looking at these dogs on all these different pads. And I thought, well, if that's working for dogs, I wonder if it would work for a horse. And so I asked Joyce and she said, well, who knows, but time it for 15 seconds. So I grabbed some things out of my shed and I drove to the lesson and I walked in and the rider was already on the horse and I walked over to her and I said, I, you know, I'm gonna do this. And my students are very used to me doing unusual things if you've ever ridden with me. Um, and I put the pad underneath his foot, put his foot down, timed it for 15 seconds, and he walked off completely different. So um, twice in my life, my life has changed in 15 seconds. And the first time was in 1994 when I was in Kentucky and I was on a horse that reared up and fell over backwards, rolled over me and punched my femur through my hip socket. I was 27 at the time. Um, and then this time, when I put a horse on a pad and he like totally changed the way he moved. Okay, somebody had a question. Let's see if I can find that question. Oh, it's disappeared. Um, so uh, that day I worked with three horses. The second was a quarter horse um, and he was had a really poor canner. In an hour we had a beautiful round canner. The third horse was a halflinger owned by Catherine Wyckoff, who is also a Feldenkrais practitioner, dear friend of mine, who does myofascial hippotherapy, therapeutic riding, Feldenkrais, um, and it was her horse, and she was on him, and in an hour we had a round canner. And so I was hooked. Um, Catherine still to this day uses her surefoot pads with her horses. Um, Andy was the horse at the time, and uh, he still enjoys standing on surefoot pads. So some people ask me, how long should I use these pads with my horse? And the answer is, as long as he would like them. 
um, and that could be years and not necessarily every day. So just like you, um, maybe some days you're more interested in doing a particular exercise or activity than others, but you're still interested years later. Um, I watch my cats all the time and they have different toys and a tower and some days they're using their tower and other weeks go by and they never get on it and then suddenly it's a favorite again. So it's very much like that with Surefoot pads. So uh, this is uh, going on eight years now that I've been doing Surefoot with horses and I've seen all kinds of changes and all kinds of things happen. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of go through a little bit, let's see, I would like info about keeping safe. Uh, let's see. Yes, I'm recording and I would like info about keeping safe and anytime a horse is, has an extreme negative reaction. It's a really great question. Um, let me get into just some basics and then we can talk about that. Um, so I'm going to screen share here. So the pads come in a variety of densities. Here they are. Um, the orange is hard. The green is firm. The yellow is firm slant. So you can see it's cut on an angle and it's the same material as the firm. Pink is a hard slant. So it's the same material as the hard cut on an angle. Purple is medium. Blue is soft. And then pods I think of as more advanced for horses that are uh, well experienced with the surefoot pads. And then this one in the middle is what we call the physio pad that comes in half size and full size. Full size is just simply twice the, the length of a half pad. So a full pad is 24 by 16 by inch and a half. And the half pad is 16 by 12 by an inch and a half. Uh, if we're gonna look at a horse on a full pad, what you can see is there's plenty of room for two feet. So you can use it either for one foot or you can use it for two feet. And so here this horse is standing on that pad with one foot, um, but that pad is big enough for two. And then um, here is a twin foal that we saw um, the, just a few days after he was born and he couldn't get up on his own. And so we got him up and we just scattered the pads around and we let him stand on the different pads and kind of guided him a little bit, but didn't make him stand on anything. And you can see he's standing on the half physio pad. So you can see how much smaller that is. It's half the size. Um, and the next day this foal was galloping around and playing around. Um, his his uh, ankles were really, really weak, but I recently got a picture of him and he's he looks normal. He's totally upright and it's really cool. So the different densities are because different, just like people, different horses want different densities. And when we start, I typically start with what's called the hard pad um, because it's going to give slowly to heat and pressure and it has no lateral give. So this is an impression that was left over after a horse stood on this pad. And it's a great pad as a diagnostic to see where the load is. And what you can see is how asymmetrical this foot is. And what was really interesting is that during the session, and this was a woman sitting on her horse, um, she came for a riding lesson, but we did sure foot. Um, at the end of the lesson, we put the horse back on the pads and this is the same foot. Here it is, just the one. And here's the two feet. And you can see how the pressure has evened out so much over that foot. So, It'll take the impression of a foot, if you leave the horse standing on it for a few minutes, um, and it'll return. So you just, I take photographs of the, of the print so that I have a record of it, and then it returns. And here I just simply flipped it over. So it's orange on the top side and it's ivory on the underside. It's all the same material on both sides. And um, so I just flipped it over so I had a clean surface to work with, the one didn't have any remaining prints. But you know, in a, depending on the temperature, if it's a little colder, it'll take a little longer. If it's warmer, it'll happen a little faster. It will just return to being a flat pad. So it doesn't hold that impression forever. It just gives to heat and pressure. You can see where the load is, and then afterward it's gonna return. So here's a horse standing with both front feet on a hard pad, and you can see that it's, he's been standing there a little while. And so now it's been giving to heat and pressure, and it gives really slowly. So I really like this pad for nervous, anxious horses, weak horses, horses that are uncertain about changes in footing, horses that um, have been laid up. 
And when your horse is laid up or in a stall, he's basically deconditioning the whole time. So anything we can do to keep that horse in some degree of condition and keep the little tiny postural muscles working is great. But we don't wanna to offer too much lateral instability because the horse is already compromised. So that's where the hard pad can be really handy. And I always tell people, especially in an injury situation or, or any kind of medical condition, that you always wanna ask your vet before starting a Surefoot program and listen to what their advice is. We've got a lot of veterinarians now using Surefoot. In fact, Dr. Melissa King just, um, they just posted a lecture by Dr. King and she talks about the Surefoot pads and shows photographs of using Surefoot pads for rehabilitation. So that was really awesome to see that today on Facebook. Um, when a horse has a, like a soft tissue injury, and somebody sent me an email and asked that question, when you have a soft tissue injury, um, I always think about the other three legs that are taking on more work because one leg is compromised. So um, I, what I do is I work with all the other legs first, and then when the vet says it's okay to work with the injured leg, only use the hard pad um, because you don't want that lateral instability. But again, this is where if your veterinarian is familiar with Surefoot, they might write you a protocol specific to your horse. So what I'm offering you here is just general guidelines that I work with the other three uninjured legs because they're taking more load. And then I work with the injured leg by itself when authorized and start with only the hard pad because I don't want lateral instability. Um, so how, somebody asked how you get a horse ready to do the pads. And this is the thing that's the, the most fascinating um, is that you don't have to get them ready to do the pads. They're just waiting for us to offer. And so let me just see if I have a picture here of where I, um, I have a quick start guide that takes you all the way through the process of working with a horse. And um, it's on my website, murdochmethod.com under the Surefoot tab. It's also on my YouTube channel, Murdoch Method, and I've uploaded it. I have another YouTube channel now, Surefoot Equine, and I've uploaded it there. So in terms of um, how to approach your horse and what to do, that's all on a, on a video where you can go and watch that. But the, the key is to make an offer to the horse. And to do that, I just simply hold the pad out where they can sniff it, touch it, look at it. Um, many horses uh, ignore the, the pad and aren't interested at first until they've had an experience with it. I know I have a picture here somewhere of offering it. Um, I thinned out my pictures in hopes of making this easier, but <laughs> uh, doesn't always happen that way. Um, so I just hold it out to the horse and I make an offer. And then uh, I approach the horse. I stroke my hand on his leg. I make sure that when I drop the pad on the ground near his hoof, if he shows me any reactivity whatsoever, I slow down back up, um, stop, and then uh, come again after he's had a chance to walk away and think about it. So this is never ever forced. That's really, really critical because if you scare the horse or make them anxious when you start, then they're always gonna be a bit worried about it. And the whole idea is that this is an offer. So uh, I'll just share this picture. I've already dropped the pad and placed the horse's foot on the pad. So uh, essentially this was a nervous horse. I took the rider off the horse first. If I see any signs of anxiety, I always take the rider off. It's always a good idea to start without the rider if you have any concern whatsoever. Um, my day job is teaching riding, um, so I'm very cognizant and I have to approach horses all the time because I put my hands on the riders. So I'm very cognizant of the horse's reactions to me as I approach. Um, if I see an ear cock, an eye, you know, they're looking away or, you know, they're blowing their nose, they're snorting, then obviously I have to stop and um, slow down, take the pad away, uh, reapproach. But the average horse, and this is the bell curve, and there's always a bell curve. There's some horses that refuse your foot, and there's some horses that won't get off pads. Um, the bell curve is that I approach with the pad, I hold it out, I let them sniff it, I drop it casually on the ground to make sure they're not startled by it dropping. I just stroke down their leg, ask them to pick up a foot. When they give me the foot, and I don't force that, I just ask them to give me a foot and wait. And when they pick up a foot, because almost every horse on the planet except for foals knows that we want their foot, I pick it up, I kick the pad into place with my foot, and I place their hoof on the pad. 
Now, safety is one of my most biggest concerns, and I see people all the time with their hands down by the horse's foot when they're placing the pad. The problem with this is safety. If the horse loses his balance, he could step on your hand. Um, also, you're bent way over, and so you're vulnerable. If the horse sees something that you don't see, he could come over you. So I teach people to keep one hand on their lower back. Just put the back of your hand on your lower back. And I'm gonna stop screen share for a second so you can see what I'm talking about. I take my hand, I put it on my lower back. And now I only have one hand to work with. So now I have to reach down and pick up the horse's leg, use my foot to kick the pad into place, and then place the foot down with only one hand, and that keeps this hand safe. So safety is one of my biggest concerns um, uh, because you never quite know how a horse is gonna react the first time you put a foot on a pad. That's the most, the moment where you have to pay the most amount of attention. I've had horses that seem completely calm, have been totally handled, you know, allow people to do everything and you put them on a pad and they go, whoa, what was that? Um, again, it's a small number, it's the edges of the bell curve, but I always work to the edges of the bell curve. And so um, I don't have to lunge them, it's not about exercise, it's not about lunging, it's really just about making an offer. And my example is, if I take you to the ice cream store, but you've never had ice cream, I say, would you like an ice cream? And you're either gonna say yes or no, but most people are willing to try it, so I'm gonna offer you vanilla because that's kind of the simplest, the plainest, the easiest to kind of you know get used to. And then if you don't like it, okay, you don't like ice cream. Um, but the majority of people do. And then it's a question of, do you like chocolate or vanilla? Or maybe you want strawberry. And so that's why we have the different pads is to offer different densities, which have a different amount of give and provide the horse with an enriched experience where they become self-aware and start to explore their balance and, and become aware of their habits and change. If I have a really nervous, anxious horse, the first thing I have to do is to recognize when does that horse start getting anxious as I approach? It might be that I'm three feet away, two feet away, it might be when I'm next to him, it might be, and I've had this happen, literally 20 feet away and the horse was running backwards when I picked up a pad. In those cases, you have to really, really, really chunk it down. Meaning, uh, stop, put the pad down, go over to the horse, reassure the horse, come back, put myself between the horse and the pad. So I put the horse in a position of safety. Um, I'm gonna have Sharon Wilsey on again on Monday and she'll talk about horse speak. And by putting myself between the pad and the horse, I'm saying, I'm gonna keep you safe. So that's really important. I often kick the pad away from the horse so that he sees it's moving away because I wanna instigate his curiosity and then I'll take him away. I won't make him have to deal with this because the number one question the horse has is am I safe? And if he doesn't feel safe, then he's not gonna trust me and I have to get him to trust me before he'll trust the pad. So I'll kick the pad away, I'll go and stand on the pad, um, I might have another horse there that does like Surefoot and I'll put that horse on pads and let this one observe. I've done that in herd settings with the horses loose. It's super fascinating. Um, I'll work in an area where the horse is loose um, and just let him explore it a little bit. Um, so there's many approaches when a horse is really nervous and the most important thing is that you have to listen to the horse. The horse gets a choice with Surefoot. That's one of the number one tenants. Keep your hand away from the herd, hoof, and the horse has a voice. And it's, it's really Surefoot in those cases becomes an opportunity to really listen and hear what that horse is saying. So I think horses are whispering to us all the time and we're the ones that have to up our listening skills to recognize what they're trying to tell us. Um, my horse has recently been, so I've got a question here. My horse has recently been diagnosed with mild laminitis. Sure fed pads were recommended as part of aftercare. That's awesome. Along with diet changes and special rocker shoes. I watched your video to plan the start the treatment, uh, which has me a little concerned. The treatment recommended by the staff seems really intense. Um, I have, I have experienced, in fact, Dr. Joyce Harmon's horse, uh, let me find those pictures, they're not in the file that I had. Um, Dr. Joyce Harmon, my guest the other night, her horse um, is 20 something years old and has a case of mild case of laminitis. And we've been using the uh, firm slants 
and the, she will stand on those pads for a, quite a while, up to an hour, uh, and she's not swaying or rocking, so we can let her stay longer, and she's in heaven. Um, and it's really, really made a difference. In three nights, she went from being toe pointing and very uncomfortable to standing really quietly and square. And you can never find the pictures that you want when you want them. But hopefully you're not seeing me do this rapid scrolling, looking for a picture. Um, hang on, I think I might have them here. It was January. Yep, I think, yep, I've got them. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little screen share here. Um, it had been raining, so she's, uh, and she was quite furry. So here she is. Let's see, where did, where did she start with toe pointing? Um, we started actually with just one uh, slant pad, and, and when Joyce told me that she was laminitic, I said to her, do you have your slant pads? And she said, yes. And so these are firm slant pads. And as you can see that she's standing there quite happily, I'll just go backwards because I find the beginning of these. Um, she worked with her over three nights um, and I wasn't there every night to take pictures, but we started with the front and Joyce just simply offered her the firm slant and asked her which foot she would like it under. And I think when you start to recognize that the horses know their bodies better than we do, our job is to simply facilitate their process, to make an offer and to ask them. And so Joyce only had one pair of firm slants at the time and she had a pair of hard. So what you can see is that the mare is on the hard pads on the back feet and the firm slants in front. Um, she didn't start out on four pads, she started out on one pad and then went, but this mare has been on pads before, so she was pretty quick to, um, to enjoy it. And you can see here, this was one of the, uh, the first nights. You can see how she's taken her right front foot off the pad at this point. That was the most uncomfortable foot but she left the left front on, and of course she's yawning. So um, I, I would tell you that we started with this horse as soon as we saw that she was sore footed, as soon as we saw that she was uncomfortable, um, we got out the pads and you can see how she made her own slant here. And that's when I was like, we need a second pair of slants. You can put them on the diagonal. Um, you can, you know, typically I use them heel high. I go in the direction that the horse is obviously going. Um, but I would say that if you have a laminitic horse and you have any surefoot pads, offer it to your horse. If they don't want it, they'll step off. And that's the whole idea behind making it an offer, not a demand. So um, I, I wouldn't even wait. I just, if, when I see a horse that's laminitic and I know there's pads available, and th in this case, the vet was the one who was forgetting to use them, um, you know, just get started. They're going to step off if they don't like it. Um, okay, so I have um, just a couple comments here in the chat. I have firm, medium, soft. Let me finish getting the hard physio pad. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll get to the physio pad in a second. Let me look at the second question with horses that are injured who don't have underlying problems. Absolutely, if a horse that's not injured and doesn't have underlying problems, absolutely, I recommend Surefoot. And the reason for that is that Surefoot will help you with your training. Surefoot will help you with your horse feeling more confident, more, uh, more square, more balanced. Um, I was, here's an example. Um, this horse had been diagnosed with Lyme disease and treated. We did one 40 minute session total, and this is how she was moving the next day. So the, just the difference in balance and behavior and movement. Um, we're affecting many, many things with the horse, proprioception, balance, habits, um, and just like people, horses have habits. We have underlying patterns of movement that we're unaware of. When we become aware of those patterns, we can make a change. But if we don't recognize that we have the pattern, we can't do anything about it. Surefoot gives the horse an opportunity to become self-aware and to self-correct his posture, behavior, and movement. And I've seen this so many times now, in the eight years, um, I know it's true. I was, last year, I was in Germany, I was working with a Grand Prix rider, lovely, lovely rider, lovely, lovely horse, and didn't have any real issues, no known issues. 
um, and I started working with the pads and the comment that he made at the end of the session and a session is where I put pads under the horse's feet, starting with one horse goes for a walk, come back, do it again, goes for a trot. So the focus is working with the pads in movement. His comment at the end of the ride was that I no longer had to train my horse. I simply had to ride my horse. In other words, he'd been dealing with these little niggling training issues that he's constantly trying to correct from the back of the horse. But when we addressed the horse from the foot and how the foot met the ground, he no longer had to deal with those training issues. They disappeared. And so, so often we think that we have a training problem, but I think what we really have is a balance problem. And this is true of many behaviors. So here's a little video. He's on the hard pads and he's on firm slants behind. Again, we didn't start with four pads. This was a three-day clinic. And at this point, he's on uh, four pads. And I'm just gonna make sure the sound's off. His name was Chance. And the reason his name was Chance was, this was his last chance to make it with a person. And if he didn't make it with this person who was super kind, he was not gonna make it with anybody. This horse came to the clinic and could not stand still. He's a Pasifino. And that was his, you know, he couldn't stand still. He was super anxious. And here, at, after three days, this horse is not only standing still, but he's swaying, he's checking out the pads, he's totally react, relaxed. You see that little head twitch. Sharon Wilsey talks about that as a reset. You see him experimenting with his body. And he was a totally different behavior pattern after we did Surefoot. Calm, relaxed, head down and this stuff sticks. And so that's the thing is, if you have a horse that's just a horse you wanna make feel better, you can use Surefoot. Um, you can use it in any environment, in any situation where you want the horse to be more relaxed, calm, better behave, better performance. Um, that's the beauty of it. Let's see, do I, uh, um, you're also working the little tiny muscles so you can think of this as a, a way to improve your horse's physical being. In other words, strengthening muscles, and that's what Dr. Melissa King was talking about in her lecture on um, uh, equine um, physical therapy, is that by standing on the pads, just like a person standing on an unstable surface, you're working the little tiny postural muscles and you're building strength. And we have many horses, and she had one in her talk, where at first the horse was swaying a lot, but after using the pads, the swaying decreased because he got stronger, he got more physically fit. And we're working those little tiny postural muscles. So those are the ones that are often harder to reach. Is just like in people, the little tiny postural muscles are really the key. Um, this horse here is standing on a half physio pad flipped over. The physio pads have two surfaces, an inch of hard and a half inch of medium. We used to call them the farrier pad because we designed them for farriers, but we found that they were so useful in all kinds of situations that we changed the name to the physio pad. And this is the half physio pad. It's the lowest profile pad we have. It's the only one with two totally different materials. And it's a great pad um, when I'm introducing a nervous horse. You know, if I have a horse that's anxious, it's much easier to approach with a half physio pad than a two inch thick pad. Um, it's also really handy for, um, it's the one you can pack with you anywhere you go. I um, went to Sharon Willsey's clinic down in Virginia and there was a horse there that was super stressed because he trailered down really badly. He was parked next to a golf course and they were having a tournament and every time a golf ball was hit, he got worried. So I just spent time, about 20 minutes, putting him on the half physio pad, told him at the end when he was relaxed to let him eat as much hay as possible and they loaded him up in the van to ship home. He had shipped down in that van really badly and they're in Pennsylvania. And on the way home, they broke down on 495 on the beltway outside DC with a flat tire. Long story short, took them 10 hours to get home. They had to get off the highway, get the tire fixed. Fortunately, they didn't have to unload the horses. But when they got home, she messaged me and said the horse stayed relaxed the entire time. Now, I can't say that Surefoot's the reason, only reason for that, but I can say that that horse trailered down and was very anxious coming down and was very calm going home after I worked with him and managed to survive a really horrific experience of having a flat tire on the side of the road. I think that people should have stood on the pad at that point. 
Um, so it's just a really handy pad. It's not that big. I never travel without a pad anymore. Um, I've had people that have taken my training as equine professionals to become surefoot practitioners. And they're all committed to carrying a half physio pad because you never know when you're going to come across a horse that needs some help. Uh, so somebody's asking about navicular with soft tissue issues per MRI, uh, toes in badly. You start with checking with your vet that it's okay to use sure foot and you start with the uninjured legs and the hard pad. So the, the more injury there is, the more instability, the more anxiety, you always go harder. You go with firm when your horse is basically calm. Um, let's find a firm picture here. Hang on, I'm just gonna unshare my screen for a second um, so you don't get nauseous. Um, so anytime there's like any kind of uh, injury or compromise or uh, a veterinary issue or illness, you always start harder because you don't wanna create a lot of instability. You wanna offer a lot of comfort and give the horse a chance to kind of relax into it. Um, but again, you know, check with your vet before you start the program because they may have a specific protocol that they want you to do. Uh, let's see, I would like to info about keeping safe anytime my horse has a negative reaction. I did that one. How do you recommend getting horse ready? Okay. Uh, what foot did you put the pad on when the trimmer is trimming? Oh, I have a great picture for that. I'll show you that next section. Laminitis. Okay. Let me check the chat here and see if I have other uh, comments and questions. What foot did you put this pad? Oh, okay, that's the trimming one again. So um, this is the firm pad. Let me go here for a second. Firm starts with lateral instability. As you can see, it gives more than the hard pad uh, laterally and it kind of deforms a bit. Um, it's charcoal with a green top. Uh, here's another picture. It doesn't matter how much of the horse's foot is on the pad. It doesn't matter if they stand on it for even a second. It does. So one of the things you have to let go of is your uh, expectations of your horse. I have literally had horses that um, didn't even stand on the pad, but uh, brush the pad with their foot. I finally found the pause button. <laughs> Every day I learn something about Zoom. It makes me very happy that I'm uh, gradually getting better at this. I just found I can pause the, oh yeah, here he is. Okay, the Zoom share. So um, this horse here, this is down in Costa Rica. He didn't even stand on the pad. He simply brushed his foot over the top of the physio pad and then had this enormous release. Now that's very unusual. I think of that as way out on the bell curve. My horses that have um, sort of atypical responses, either positive or negative, he had a very positive atypical response, literally just brushing the pad and then yawning. The owners had never seen this horse yawn in the two years that they had him. Okay, here's another example of the half physio pad. This is actually two of them. This is at the World Equestrian Games when James Gilchrist, the farrier there, um, heard about a horse from Denmark that was in trouble. I talked to him, but I can't remember exactly what the problem was at the time. Um, as you can see, this ankle looks super fat. Um, but basically what he told me was that the surefoot physio pad, the half physio pads here, two of them, bought him enough time to get the treatment that the horse needed to save the horse. So we often think of this as an emergency pad. Um, we've had numerous cases of people talking about their horses started to colic, they called the vet, which is what you should do, and then they went out with their physio pad or their half physio pad or any pad actually, and they just started putting it underneath the horse's feet. And by the time the, the vet got there or after a few minutes, the horse was no longer colicking. Um, I did a workshop for Ida Hammers, Barefoot Trimmers in uh, Illinois last October. And that night there was a horse colicking and they used this half physio pad for five minutes under each foot and the horse stopped colicking. Now, I've had at least seven reports of that so far. So um, this is where, you know, I can't say that Surefoot's the only reason that that happened, that the horse got better, but you know, it's harmless. It's not gonna cause any harm. If the horse doesn't want it, he'll walk off and you let him, but it can literally save a horse's life. And that's the thing that's so important is that if we have something that we can do, we need to do it to save that horse. Um, I have the video of Ida Hammer trimming a horse using Surefoot. I thought I had it in this. 
Um, but I will show you this picture. This is really cool. So Ida went down to Dr. Deb Taylor's in Alabama, and Dr. Deb Taylor does the form hoof. They had a very club-footed horse, a uh, quarter horse Rainer, club-footed behind, and he was in just really, really uncomfortable. So they put him on the physio pad and it gave very slowly. And then they decided to put him on the physio pad and take an x-ray. And so here, what you can see is the top level of the pad, and then it's given under the pressure of the horse's foot. And he's basically had so much pressure here at the toe, you can see how it's kind of bottomed out the pad here a little bit. But as a result of using the physio pad with the x-ray, they changed how they trim this horse and they left more heel. And I'm not a farrier, so I'm not about to try and tell you what to do, but they changed what their plan was and the horse walked off so happy. So, you know, this is where the, the uses are only limited by your imagination. Um, here's this horse on firm pad. She's on a hard slant behind. She's a dressage horse. This was in New Zealand and um, uh, the owner reported that she would have nervous anxiety issues. Um, I started with the hard pad and moved to the firm and she just really, really loved it. Um, I do have that video of Ida trimming a horse on pads. Uh, while I'm looking for that, I'm gonna show you Bob. Bob is a thoroughbred off the track. We worked with him for three sessions over four days. Uh, session was about 45 minutes. Um, I started out unmounted and took her off the horse and put him on hard. And then by the end, he progressed through all the pads, hard, medium, soft, firm, um, slants, and went to pods. And this is the difference in this horse before and then after. And he continues to improve even though she's not using the pads at this point. Um, we get uh, reports about Bob and he's still making progress, but the significant, um, progress came when we did the three sessions over four days. So uh, that's just one of the fascinating things about Surefoot is that once we can set the system into a new direction, it seems as though uh, it can continue to progress. I'm gonna look over here in my videos, see if I can find Ida's video. Uh, let's see, I have one pair from a few years ago that are yellow on top with a light bottom. Okay, so when I did the first batch of pads, and so your pads are four years old and it's great to see they're still in use, um, we thought we could make the foams different colors, so we made all the tops yellow. And then we found out that we couldn't make all the different foams colored because of the volume we were gonna have to have, and it was more than I could do. So we changed and made all the tops colored. And um, so the first batch was all yellow topped. And what I would tell you is um, squeeze it and see how squishy it is. If it's very, like takes a lot to squeeze, it's gonna be hard. If it squishes really easy, it's going to be soft. And if it's actually a white foam, as opposed to a yellowish foam, it's a medium and it'll feel kind of springy. Um, and you can always send me pictures if you're not sure what density put a horse on it or you stand on it, send me the picture and I'll probably be able to tell you. And then take a Sharpie <laughs> and write the density on the top of the pad so that you know what it is. Um, now in the logo, the Surefoot logo that's stamped on every pad, we put hard, medium, soft, firm, firm slant, hard slant in the little logo so that everybody knows what their density is. Um, I found the video from Ida. So this was a horse that was very arthritic, super uncomfortable. She put the pad under, sorry, get that out of the way, under the opposite front foot while she was working on him. And he's totally free, right? And you can see that he totally acknowledges what the pad's doing. And I think this is the video where he dawns for us. Um, but you know, obviously Ida let his foot down when he needed to. Let me see if I have the other, this is it. Nope, that's the short one. Here it is. So this is a little bit before that moment. Okay, so basically the, the physio pad and half physio pad are great when you're a farrier. 
um, or barefoot trimmer because it's thin enough that you can put it under a different foot and you can move it around and just figure out which foot the horse likes. If you're working with a big draft horse, using the two inch foot hard pad is also fine. And if you, whatever pad you have, but the more stable it is, um, the easier it is for the horse to balance and find that comfort while you're working. And we have so many barriers now. In fact, we go to Hoof Summit every year and we've been there for three years. And it's really cute because these farriers walk by and go, oh, my client has one of those and it makes my job a lot easier. And, and you know, it takes them a little time to adopt, but um, they're starting to figure out that surefoot pads can make them their job easier. And our whole intention behind making the physio pads was that if we make the horse more comfortable, we have made everyone safer, handler, horse, and professional. And it's a tough enough job to trim or shoe a horse without a horse that's in pain and trying to get away from you because he hurts. And so if you can offer that comfort, what I'm gonna tell you too is that the horse will remember you and go, you're the person that brought me that nice comfy pad. And so they're already gonna start letting down before you even begin. Um, even better, if you can get your client to use surefoot pads between your visits so that they're not only helping keep the improvement going, but they're also getting the horse more and more acclimated so that you get this, it's Pavlovian, the horses to see the pads and start to let down, then it's gonna make everybody's job easier. And um, let's see, do, do, do. let's see if I have any questions here. What do I recommend for sticky stifles? Oh, okay, so let me get over to, um, my my album over here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the slants, um, whether that's firm slants or hard slants. Let me just find a picture here of hard slants. Um, because what they, what we know that they do for people and dogs is that they help the, um, the lower back. So let's see, hopefully you can all see this. This is a horse down back in Costa Rica again. He's on firm pads in front. And obviously you start with one foot. This horse has been on surefoot pads for years, so I could quickly go to four. But you start with one foot, just do one foot all the way around, and then come back and offer two front. Could be a separate session, doesn't have to be the same day. Um, but you can see he's standing on the hard slant behind. And um, I typically use them heel high. When we put people on the hard slants and have them soften their knees a little, because people, horses can't lock their stifles the way humans can, so when you stand on the hard slant, heel high with a soft knee, what you see happen is everybody's balance shifts back and they all report that their lower back feels better. And so while I can't conclude that that's what's happening in horses, I think that that's a big possibility. I find that the horses really enjoy the slants. I find I use them a lot and it's not just for back feet. You can also use slants for front feet and you can use them, oops, here we are, heel high. You can also use them heel low, although I don't do that very often. And you can also use them, wait, where's that picture? Here it is, oh, hang on. Uh, in supination and pronation, meaning uh, outside high or inside high. And where is that? Let me just, I'm just gonna scroll through and see if I can find that picture. Show it to you here in a second. I know I pulled it into this album. That horse. Uh, and of course I can't find it when I want it. Hang on, I'll just look a little more here and see if it's over on this side. Yeah, I can't find it when I want it, but I'll just show you here's here is just a close up of a firm slant, and you can see that it's going to give a little more than the hard slant. Um, where to start with no health issues? If your horse is basically calm, in other words, doesn't like blow up at unexpected things, doesn't mind different things under its feet, um, is basically calm, you start with firm. If your horse is anxious, nervous, weak, ill, uh, under the advice of a veterinarian, you start hard. So just think about. Um, you, if you offer too much in instability at first, they're, they're not able to handle it if they're weak or scared. So you wanna let go harder 
when you have any kind of issues. And I have a little chart on the website on Murdoch Method. When you go to the Surefoot pads, there's a little chart that shows the different pads and kind of describes where to start. I also have been putting up videos on the Surefoot Equine Facebook page. Please join that Facebook page and also join Fans of Surefoot group. We have lots of great discussions there and case studies and people ask questions all the time. So fans of Surefoot group, Surefoot Equine Facebook page, Surefoot Equine YouTube channel, Murdoch Method YouTube channel. Um, I have little videos that talk about um, all of this stuff um, and talk about how to get started with your horse, which pad to start with. Um, chronic arthritis and use the physio are hard. Yeah, I'm asking this for 80 pound German Shepherd. So we do have um, Surefoot pads for dogs now. Um, we call them Sure Paws pads. And let's see. Oh, maybe resume share. We were there. Um, this is the large. It's the same size as the full physio pad. This is the large medium. And we have um, medium. There's the logo. Uh, we have slants. Let's see. I don't know if I have the picture of slants here. Hang on. I'm just going to. Okay, I'm, pa I'm paused. It looks like I'm paused. Oh, good. Here, this is what I resume share. So this is Robin Shelton uh, Larson in Australia. She's been using our Surefoot Sure Paws pads. She tested them out, and here she's got uh, this uh, whip it on the firm slant heel high, and she's the one that's been saying that she can feel the the psoas soften. Um, so the dogs kind of come on and off. She sets up her table and there's several dogs in that house and they hop up on the table and ask for some work and then they'll go off. And she just uh, has the pads on the table. This is sled dogs in um, Sweden. This is Felice Deppler. She's been testing out the dog pads for us for a while and working with uh, sled dogs. Um, I think I had some other pictures. Uh, we find that the dogs will often lay on it. They're a little more subtle than what we see with horses. They, um, you just kind of wander them over the pads. You can set up a line. Let's see, hold on, share. Because I don't want to make you guys sick with my scrolling. I kind of scoot back and forth. Um, this is Felice when we were first testing out dog pads. So these are horse pads and a test pad in there, that light blue one. And she would just lead the dogs over the pads and let them walk across it. This dog was um, a Swedish mountain dog who barked a lot. And so she just kind of guided him over it. Um, and I did this recently at a workshop down in uh, South Carolina. And it's fascinating because suddenly the, the dog might yawn or kind of go back over it. And so it's not as obvious as the horses, but it's having the same kind of effects. And Felice is finding that it's even helped with some dogs that are, um, have problems with thunderstorms and the same kind of calming that we see with the horses she sees with the dogs. Okay, so let's see. I have a horse with Lyme disease and puts all of his weight on his right front foot. I would start with the pad under the left front foot and follow his pattern. And I would probably start with a hard pad if he's leaning that hard onto the right front. Um, and then what I would do is I'd actually go to the back feet as well. And then I'd come over to the right front. And if he's not willing to pick it up for me, I won't do it until he gives me that foot. Because it may be, and this is what we have to think about, when a horse won't give you a particular foot, I don't think of it as the horse being stubborn. I think of it as that's the supporting leg. That's the one he's leaning on to stay upright. And if I take away his supporting leg and put it on a really unstable surface, I'm going to make him really nervous. Um, I have something called the balance trail that I set up for people, and I take all the pads and I make like hopscotch. And I watch as people walk through. And what we'll do is we'll lead with our free foot. In other words, if I constantly step forward with my right front, sorry, my right leg, it's my left leg that's my stable leg. It's my left leg that I'm still feeling secure on as I experiment and test out the surface that I'm going to. So um, if, oh wait, sorry. I, I don't know if I have pictures of people going over pads. Oh, here's just another cute, uh, you know, dog finding a pad. And of course the cats wander over and find the pads. Um, so we, the cats are even uh, more subtle, but it's so fascinating because they seem to like them as well. Um, but 
we tend to think of, oh, my horse won't give me this leg, he should give me this leg. And I look at it as, oh, this horse is standing on this leg, he needs this leg, let me go to the one he can give me, because if I take away his support, he's gonna be in trouble, especially post illness like Lyme disease. Um, if I have a horse that's wearing its feet low on the outside, high inside, both on one side, how would I set the pads? I'd start with the flats, I'd kind of watch how he goes, and then I'd start working with the slants. And let me see if I can find, I'm gonna pause share and go find that picture uh, that I was talking about where I did supination and pronation with the horse, um, because I think that'll give you a good idea of how you can experiment I, you know, I swear I put that in my slideshow here. I was trying to be so much more prepared this time, but you know, you guys lead me on different questions and then it's, it's fun. That's actually the way it, it should be. Um, this is kind of a, it's not quite a, the right example, but it's close enough that you can see how we've got the pad sideways so that the horse is standing in what would be supination you know, the foot aiming toward midline a little bit. So you can have it either front to back or sideways, heel high, um, pronation or supination. So angled one way or the other for the horse. Uh, let me go over here. I think I've got a bunch of questions over here. I'm gonna try and get to, uh, I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> uh, can we buy horse pads and use them for horses, dogs, and people? Sure, um, you can buy them in sets. They're on the website. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be launching Surefoot Equine by the end of the month. Uh, it's coming along the website is, and every time I look at it, we add some great stuff, and I love how it's progressing. But right now, you can find uh, the information and find Surefoot pads at murdochmethod.com and I have different packages there. You can absolutely use the same pads for people and horses. We do it all the time. Um, in fact, the only difference we have when we do it for people is we have a different logo. You can use them for the dogs. Um, sometimes they're, they're, the dogs want a little bit bigger surface area and you can use the physio pad. I'll just show you, pause share for a second. Um, this older dog that really, really loved the physio pads. Um, to, here he is. This guy here, if you look at his feet, you can see he's an old guy. So we put out two full physio pads and flipped it over to the medium side, and he thought those were awesome. He was, he just kept hanging out there. He was great. Um, let's see, where to start? No health issues. I think I've answered that. Do I says I have nine questions, but I think I've answered many of them. Oh, a horse with back problems. She moves her left hind out and around in a few steps and then she takes, then warms out of it. Vet feels it's in her back. She also does this on rough ground. The horse is no longer ridden. I just wanna make her more comfortable. And that's so kind of you. And that's really where Surefoot can, these older horses, arthritic horses and horses that are, uh, you know, uh, have done their service and like your therapeutic riding horses who really uh, deserve a lot of, a lot of attention and love um, can really benefit. So um, what I would recommend that you do is you start, if she's basically calm, I would start with firm and probably hard slants. I'd want the, that combination because I really love the hard slants for, for the back feet where they're gonna give a lot of support and the horse can really relax into them. Um, and I would start with, if she's basically calm and uh, you didn't say how old she was, but you could start with the firm and just do that under all the hooves, you know, one at a time and then do both front and both back. But then I would probably move to the hard slants and offer that. Um, this horse here, and here's those yellow pads that somebody was mentioning. This was early on when the tops were yellow. And I'm looking at the amount of give and these are probably hard. Um, this horse here, and I don't know if you can see it on this picture, um, really interesting story, sad story. The evil stepfather, literally, stole 20 horses, took them across state lines, ran this horse through a fence where she got cut down to the bone on her, on her upper arm here, and then abandoned her. And the owner found her and brought her home. It took a year for that injury to heal so that she wasn't an open wound anymore. But then after that, every time she rode her in the indoor, and this is something I didn't know at the time, she would explode So you can at the doors. So you can see where the light's coming in, there's a door on either side of the arena, and she would just explode 
and she was moving so badly. And so I just started with the sure foot pads, just like wood. And at the end of the session, I didn't see a lot of change, but the owner was in tears because it was the first time she was able to ride her in the indoor without having her explode. I went back about two months later to see this horse. She did not do any pads in between. And the horse looked like a completely different horse. Her neck had started to fill out and I could see the, the really exquisite horse that she used to be. And then we continued and we did different things. We did pods and we did high-low with the pods. I'll do that on another, another webinar. Um, but this was a horse that, you know, had severe, severe injuries. And we just, you know, two sessions and this horse was so completely different. It was stunning. Um, yeah, hind end problems, horses that stock up. I, I can't say specifically your horse is going to stop stocking up. What I can say is that we've seen all kinds of things like this improve and that's where the the facebook group the fans of surefoot is so helpful because you can ask has anybody worked with a horse that's stocked up and what did you do and how did it work out so that's a great question for the um for the fans page uh, if you're gonna hire a bear would you buy flat or i'd start with a pair of flat um either hard flat or firm flat because the angles are kind of you know if your horse doesn't want the angle you're kind of stuck with it um and if they want to slant they'll step off and kind of go to the front of the pad and just put their toe off or their heel off, in which case now you know that your next pair of pads is gonna be a slant. Uh, let's see, I just have, oh, it's only got, have four minutes left. So I'm trying to get through all your questions here. Um, is there anything I have, if I haven't answered your question, please type it in the chat now. And I'm just use the chat as opposed to the Q&A. So I only have one thing to look at. And then I'm just gonna go over here and pause for a second and find. Uh, well, did I scroll it that way? Then okay. So what I'm going to do is I can scroll it without making you nauseous. This is the old medium. It was white foam on the bottom in the beginning when we first started making it. This is now violet, and you can see how much it gives. So here's just another picture of medium, right? You can see that it it deforms. This is a horse that's on medium in front and firm slants behind. The medium is more springy. So um, I really like, people like it. People love the medium the best because um, it has a nice springy feeling. Um, and you can see he thought about stepping off and then he did. And so she just allows the horse to step off when he's ready. If you're unmounted, and obviously if you're mounted, you need somebody to help you. But if you're unmounted, um, you know, if you're just like, here I am standing with this horse, she's let her neck down. These are all the typical signs that we see, the eye softening, ear softening, neck lowering relaxation, um, you allow them to walk off. But if they're swaying a lot, you keep it really short. If, they're, uh, if they don't wanna stay, you don't force them because they're showing you that they're out of balance anyway. Um, this is the same horse. She was actually my old horse, Blondie, um, and she injured her knee. And so we put her on the hard pads and then I gave her the soft pads and she really, really liked standing on the soft. Okay, and here she is on the firm slants. Uh, this is from behind, little video. So he's on the firm slants behind and just watch how much the rear end sways. So the swaying, we don't totally know what is happening there. I've had, I've had people try to explain Surefoot from so many different directions and I think everybody's right, but I think in the end it doesn't matter because the horses are the ones who really show us how profound it is and how important it is. Um, and so, whether it's working fascia, ting points, proprioception, uh, uh, habit patterns, neurochemicals, I think all of those are, are right. Um, doesn't matter if it's boots, shoes, or barefoot, still works. Um, this is medium in front and firm slants behind. Yawning is a really typical thing that we see. The horses get really relaxed. Um, do I use the pads with a mounted rider versus the ground? So my job is teaching riding. Um, I always, when I have uh, if I have to put my hands on the rider and the horse is anxious, I can't do my job. So I uh, use the sure foot to make it easier to, to work with the riders. If the horse seems at all worried, I take the rider off and I start that way. But then what happens is the horses really want to be with me because I brought them comfort. And the owners often complain that the horses want to be with me more than them. But if you do sure foot, the horse will want to be with you too. So it's a great way to get that connection going with the horses so that they feel uh, really comfortable 
and they want to be with us. And when they want to be with us, then it's, there's so much less problems. This was a Mustang. He was super interesting guy. He'd been a stallion for years on the range. And it uh, took a little while because he really didn't trust people on the ground. But then he actually would seek out orange, like an orange cone after he became comfortable on the physio pad. And he would let down at an orange cone. So he started to like find, uh, use the pads like safety cones and then find other objects that made him feel safe. Uh, let's see, do I use, so you can see here I have the rider on board, but again, I've always checked that the horse is okay with the pads before I do this with the rider. And obviously if you're the one on the horse, you need a ground person to do this. I'm typically on the ground, so I work with the riders. And the reason for doing this mounted is that the rider gets to feel all the tiny little changes that happen in the horse. There's no words for what they experience. It's so amazing to feel your horse go through all these little variations, feel the back change, and then literally feel the horse like looking at its foot as it lands the, on the ground and goes really paying attention. And then they move so differently. And so we start to realize that if we don't address the habits of the foot in relation to the ground, that we're missing a big piece of our training, that no matter the size of the horse, everything starts from the foot. And this horse here, this is back in Costa Rica. He was, um, we leased him for one of our retreats and the farrier was supposed to come and redo his feet. And all he did was come and tighten the clinches. And this horse was grumpy and sour. And anytime I asked him to do something, he'd, he'd be really unhappy and try to resist. And um, so I put him on pads and I did it as a demo in the round pen. And here you can see I stacked him firm slants on top of hard and he yawned like crazy. And then after that, he was so much more willing for me to try. I mean, we didn't change his feet, although he really needed his feet changed, but then he was so willing to try for me. Surefoot's not gonna solve underlying problems. Here's a horse getting two feet on a half physio pad. They can do it, but it's a little tight. Um, it's not gonna solve underlying problems. Um, if there's a really serious problem, it's, you're going to, uh, it could decompensate them so you can find it, but, it's not gonna cause a problem. And in most cases, it actually helps us see what's really going on because it acts like a magnifying glass. And then we can actually address what's going on. So as you can see, I have the rider here. Oops, I have the rider on a pair of soft and she's swaying. And this is a little Mustang she had for the uh, 90 day challenge. And the horse could not canter under saddle. So I worked with her for three days. And in the end, we cantered. And then I got a report about a week later that she was able to canter both directions. So in three days, we advanced enough that this horse could really figure it out. You see how she scared herself right there. And she was like, what's that pad? So you see that little anxious bit with the ears and stuff and the blowing? That's the signs you have to watch out for to make sure the horse is okay. And this horse was, uh, you could see that she was sort of okay. She wasn't 100% okay, but the more we worked with the pads, the more okay she got. So um, here's a thoroughbred off the track. This is great for uh, thoroughbreds off the track. Um, really helps them let down their habit patterns. That's something from Ida. This is just fascia releasing while this horse is standing on soft pads. And um, here you can see the fascia in her jaw that was so fascinating that wrinkled up. And uh, Bob, before and after. Bob was one of our just absolute stellar cases. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to email me at wendy at wendymurdoch.com. Check out Surefoot Equine Facebook page. Check out Murdoch Method and Surefoot Equine YouTube channels. We've got lots of videos up there. And the website is Murdoch Method. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'll be back again next week. I have Sharon Wilsey on Monday, Felicitas on Tuesday, Bob Belker on Wednesday, and I've forgotten who my Thursday guest is, but I'll pop out an email. So if you're not on my mailing list, join, go to the Murdoch Method website, join the email list so you stay up on all the Zoom webinars that I'm going to be doing for the duration, I hope. All right, thank you so much for tuning in and take care. Bye. Get out of this. Stop share. There we go. Oh, one more message. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's really been fun. Thanks a lot.